right, guys, welcome to the video. I hope you all are oh, well, guys. Today's video, guys, for the good old witch doctor chat. Let's go. <laughs> the season 28, guys. GR Solo Push and Long Carnival, guys. Absolutely love this build. It's a pet build where you cast darts from your character, summon pets, guys, that sh also shoot poison darts with you. Uh, this build's changed ever so slightly. We can now use Boots of Disregard now because we don't have to use Ice Climbers because of the altar. We'll go over that in a sec. And uh, yeah. It's a great build, guys. I'm currently ranked six in EU, I think. Now, Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I'm ranked six, guys. At one three nine so far, and eleven forty five. So I could probably go up to about one four two, one four three, maybe, with like a perfect rift and uh, with my current Paragon and gear score. Okay, so uh, let's show this in action, guys. So uh, I should do like a one twenty for now. We'll just talk about rotations and all that good stuff. Right, let's go, guys. Wee. Oh, not bad, Matt. Okay, guys. So first, we're gonna do is cast Spirit Walk. Make sure you're then hit Soul Harvest. This procs your damage reduction from your Bracer. Always keep these up to five stacks. Start casting some Dance Guys, cast Nado to group your monsters up. You see now we're now summoning fetishes. And as monsters die, we proc Echoing Fury. This increases your attack speed massively. And you see stuff is just getting absolutely blazed now. Okay. Alright, let's go for them. And we can try to find ourselves our first lead back. There's a lead back, guys. Nice. What's he got? Right, he's got no effects that are bad. Elite bad effects are Shielding, Juggernaut, and Waller. Okay? These effects are really bad. These are ones you wouldn't want to try to avoid. Unless you've got, like, Conduit, Power, or Speed. So you can blaze them down super quick. Okay? Alright, so round up the monsters. We're in your Poison Rotation, guys, like we are now. Hit Spirit Walk, cast your darts, and they would die. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> and that's pretty much what you got to do. So make sure you've got 5 stacks of, of Echoing Fury by killing monsters. Poison is just after physical, cast Nado, then you cast Spirit Walk to proc your damage bonus from your offhand. While you're on Poison Rotation, that makes your DPS go through the absolute roof. And then that's what you want to do through the whole rift, basically. So, round up loads and loads of monsters, guys. Loads and loads of monsters, okay? Just throw some darts into them, get their attention. Extend them back, extend them back. There's only a 120, man. So, obviously, this ain't too hard. Also, you're always looking for monsters that generate other monsters. So, Foul Conjurers also generate monsters, which is great. You want that so that way you can uh, get loads of uh, quick kills, proc your Echo and Fury. Weapon in cube. We'll go over all the other stuff at the end of the video, okay? Right, let's go forward. Looking for more of another pack, guys. No packs yet. There's one. What's he got? Waller. Now, Waller is one of the ones that you want to skip on or push most of the time. Unless you get just get the rotation going for it. There's another pack here, so let's pull these together. This one's got Juggernaut. This one is also another really bad effect. I'm only doing a 120. I can do 120 easily right now. But you can see, like, if I try shooting to this wall, look, no DPS. Absolutely nothing. So, I probably want to skip that. If you ever get the purple pool, guys, overlapping the golden pool, that's literally GG mode. Always jump into that. Because the damage increase you're going to get is absolutely massive. Okay. Let's go forward. Power piling, guys. Absolutely brilliant. One of the best things in the game. And this one's got Waller, which ain't great, we'll see. So if I if I summed him on a, on a major push, I want to try to pull him down, put him down into more density. Killed this density for Echoing Fury stacks. Did the rotation right here, and then blow him up, okay? All right, let's go forward. We've got another pack here. Orbiter, nothing great. Let's get rid of this guy quickly. So you guys, don't just pop a pylon straight away. Never, ever do that, okay? What you want to do... Is look at the pylon, okay? So you've got power or conduit, especially conduit, oh my god. Okay? Don't hit the pylon straight away. Go a little bit forward, see if there's other elite packs down the map. Pull those elite packs to the shrine, okay? And then pop it and blow them up all together, okay? That way you get the most effect out of your pylon. Remember though, with this current season buff, you can summon power from your potion sometimes, okay? You can summon this from your potion. Sometimes, if you unlock the uh, the power on the, on the altar. So if you're lucky enough to summon that, always pop your potion on physical rotation if you can. So it's just going to be ready for your poison rotation, okay? So that's where you do your big DPS. Right, let's go forwards. The best shrine for you guys, for you, on this build is actually shield. Shield will last two minutes with the setup that we have. And uh, it will keep your squirt stacks, this, at 10 all the time. When you take damage, it uh, turns it off. Little pack here, Orbiter, Vortex, Avenger, nothing too bad. Just a few mobs here. Cast Big Bad Voodoo. Pause rotation, and delete! And pop, and there they go. 
Boom, boom, boom. There you go, it's dead. Also, guys, this build, not this particular version, I'm going to go with the, the speed version. Well, there's a speed version of this build. Rather than doing a separate video for it, I'll just show you the speed variations. Very similar to this build, which is actually really strong. It's actually one of our best uh, best builds, actually, for speeds, funny enough, for this build. Which is weird, because it's got no weird setup. Using, like, uh, ROE. ROE does nothing in this build, by the way, which is such a shame. ROE does not affect fetish dart DPS. Which sucks. If it did, this build would probably be our best build we found. Come on, Blizz. Buff it. <laughs> Buff it. Right, let's go forward. Alright, this map ain't great. But yeah, guys, in most maps, you would be looking for monsters that generate other monsters. Okay, if you can get that, then uh, GG, basically, GG. Because you're going to get so much progress and Echoing Fury stacks. Dodge those bombs. You always always want to be within 20 yards of the monsters as well. Do not be scared of being in the main fray of the monsters. Because remember, you're going to get turn to stone armor stacks from your, your gloves. Okay. So don't be scared to be in the fray. Obviously, there's certain things you got to move out of, like bombs and, you know, laser beams like that and all that. Arcane beams. But um, you, are, uh, you are actually very tanky. You have a lot of self-heal in this build. Lots and lots of self-healing. Lots of self-healing and... Uh, Anchor, actually. You, know, you can actually. You're actually very, very durable. Run at least 700k HP, even if it means putting Paragon points into VIP. Okay? Run at least 700k, because if you don't have it, then uh, you're going to die quite a lot, especially with the Squirts and Necklace that debuff, okay? There's that rotation. Boom. That poke was a Juggernaut. Normally with Juggernauts, guys, I would skip it, but because I had a Conduit, you know, Conduit would just blast it into the ground super quick, okay? But guys, Quandra especially though, that's another shrine that you want to be pulling packs and monsters from all sides, man. Get into that one spot and then just torch a lot of them, okay? Torch a lot. Lovely. Unfortunately, this uh, rift is absolute garbage, man. I was hoping for a better rift in the video, but... Let's see what rift garden we get. Best rift garden we can have is Hamlin. Okay, we've got Skeleton King. Skeleton King ain't actually that bad, because he summons adds. So any Rift Guardian that summons adds is great for this build, because it's going to give you Echoing Fury stacks, okay? So our best one would be Hamlin, then Sanctress. Uh, the Spider Queen Lady is good. Skeleton King's quite good. After a while, he summons adds, so we can, you can pull these adds with Nado, get them on top of him, blast them, and do that nice rotation. Lovely. Oh, I summoned a poor, purple poor power, so always jump into that. That comes from po drinking the potion sometimes. There we go. It's going to run out now. Spirit Walker Poison Rotation. Oh, well, he died before it because of the conduit. And there you go, man. There you go. So, uh, yeah, nice and easy. So, hey, guys. So, uh, quick recap then. So, elite affixes that you do not want is Shielding, Juggernaut, and Waller. Especially Waller. Waller's a pain. If you have one of those packs, you know, either it's A, skip them, especially if there's not enough density around them to kill them, or B, pull them to a pile on, like, conduit or powers on that. We can blaze it down a lot quicker. But um, Waller is especially one of the worst ones, because uh, if your darts are hitting that wall, they're doing absolutely no damage. Absolutely no damage whatsoever. And uh, yeah, like I said, Rift Guardian, you know, Hamlin is one of the best ones, definitely, because he just summons tons of rats that you can kill easily. And proper loads are going furious thanks, guys. And watch it just go blaze! <laughs> just blaze down the middle, man. I do love this build, man. I just wish it was just a little bit stronger, a bit stronger, man. Bring it up to Araki level. Lovely, guys, lovely. Right, let's go over the gear, then. Right, guys, you need dagger darts, of course. Dagger darts. Make sure poison darts and your fetish poison darts pierce. So it basically goes through all the monsters. Okay? It just goes straight through them rather than stopping and does an extra 500% damage. Really easy, guys, to get a crafted primal this season. Okay, So uh, what you do, you blow up two primals. You get one guaranteed at 70. Your first 70 clear. Then uh, put a normal uh, legendary. We've actually got dagger darts here. I can actually do this for you right now. I've got mats to, to waste, man, so I don't care. There we go. We've got dagger darts here, guys. You know, Pop it in. It's the very last one. Bill. Okay. And press transmute. Oh! With this crafted primal. Oh, I rolled crap as well. That's a shame. Uh, with this crafted primal, uh, you can only wear one of these crafted primals. Okay. It's got like a weird background to it. Okay. So uh, this one didn't roll well. You can just keep rolling it as much as you've got mats. Okay. And you can blow it up for the for the primordial ash 55. Okay. Lovely. Right there you guys, so Dagger Darts are offhand guys to Shakarani's trap. So while you're in Spirit Walk, you gain a 100% damage buff. This damage buff is massive. So like I said during the, the run, um, pop Spirit Walk during your Poison Rotation with preferably five stacks 
of Frenzy from Echo and Fury in your cube, okay? And hope you're in a poor power as well from your Enchantress or the purple one from drinking a potion sometimes, if you're lucky like this one here, boom. Because this has increased your damage massively, especially the purple one, oh my god. If you get them both overlapping, the gold and the purple overlap, it stacks. And you can blaze a monster down it in a few seconds, man, and your poison rotation, man, it's so, so good. Brilliant. Okay, guys, for rings, this build is a late legacy of nightmares build. You need to use these two green rings. These are the only set you're allowed to use in the build, otherwise it'll, the damage will turn off. Okay, so basically every ancient item you've got on your uh, character increases your damage by 750% and gives you 4% damage reduction, okay, per agent. You can start running this build as early as six agents, okay? Obviously, you want to go super high, but you can start using it early on. Okay, okay, guys, legendary gems you want to use then is uh, Enforcer. Okay, this gives you more pet DPS and makes it so your basic fetches won't die. And then uh, use Simplicity Strength as well, increasing the damage of your primary darts for you and your pets, and also heals you for 4% of your maximum health. So the higher your HP pool is, the more return you get out of this, which is great. I do recommend at least running at least 700k HP. Okay, yeah, and that heal, guys, is so good. So the faster, the more attack speed you have on your character, then the uh, the, the more drawing you're going to be, you're just going to be healing yourself all the time, which is great. Love it. Amulet, guys, is Squirt's Necklace with Stricken. Okay, Stricken Gem basically lets you kill the Rift Guardian. You can take Stricken out. It's not recommended. But you can take Stricken out for um, for uh, being the Trapped. Now, if you put Bane Trapped in, your general DPS will be much, much higher. But the Rift Guardian will be very, very hard to kill. Like, very hard to kill. Unless the Rift Guardian is something like Hamlet or Sanctuary's. If you get Hamlet or Shractress, guys, with being the powerful, and uh, you're procking Echo and Fury, it's going to die super quick. So, most of the time, though, use Strecken, because most of the time you're not going to get that GG Rift Guardian. Unless you're super fish here, of course. It's up to you. Lovely. Okay, guys, Squirt Nexus, guys, gives you that massive damage buff, the 10 stacks. You do take 50% extra damage, though. If you get hit, then you lose these stacks. Okay, that's why I recommend the 700k. But, like I said during the video, if you have a shield pylon, that's your best pylon, okay? Because it's you're gonna maintain those 10 stacks for two minutes. And that's when you wanna be pulling absolutely everything. Pull everything, guys, to one spot and just nuke it down. Loads of pack, loads of density, absolutely everything you can get your hands on. And um, you'll be at top DPS, basically. You can just blaze, hit <laughs> so, so hard, it's great. Lovely. All right, guys, so um, let's go with the rest of the stuff then. Okay, so normally we use um, Ice Climbers to get rid of the bad effect of Stone Gauntlet. Stone Gauntlet, guys, gives you a huge armor buff. My armor goes up to like 25k when this is on fully stacked up. But it does have a bad effect where it knocks out your attack speed and your movement speed. Okay, now what we normally do, we use Ice Climbers to get rid of that bad effect, which is a pair of boots. But because of the altar, we don't actually have to do that anymore. Because once you unlock this one here, guys, Omen, gain immunity to crowd control and effects. So you don't need to use Ice Climbs anymore. So now we can now put in Boots of Disregard, okay? Gain 10,000 life regen per second for each enemy. Sorry, for each uh, second you stand still. And it stacks up to four times. So it gives you like 40,000 plus health regen. And there you go. I've got 56,893.42 health regen per second when I'm standing still. So when you're pairing that with all the armor from Stone Gauntlet as well, plus uh, the healing from Simplicity Strength and all that, you're very, very durable. So don't like be fighting on the outside edge and all that sort of stuff. Be brave. Get inside the middle of the monsters, man, and wreck them. Because once you've got those armor stacks up, and you've got all your attack speeds built up, you're going to be absolutely blasted. It's a really good combo, actually. I like it. These boots guys come from uh, Bounty Mats, by the way. Which you can get double off from the uh, tree as well. Which is great. Double Bounty Mats for the win. Lovely. Right then, guys. So, yeah, Boots of Disregard, uh, Depth Diggers to increase your primary skills damage as well, of course. So, uh, do more damage for you and your pets. Belt Guys is Witcher now, basically because it's got a ton of damage. And the most important thing is attack speed in this build, guys. Attack speed, attack speed, attack speed. Because you want to have those attack speeds uh, as high as possible, okay? Because the more darts you produce, the more DPS you're doing, the more healing you're doing as well, which is great. And more stricken stacks as well. Brilliant. Okay, guys, for chess is Aquila. So this gives you 50% damage reduction as well. Uh, we don't really have any mana spender apart from Piranhas. So you see the shielding effect here on the Karais. When we cast this, that's it. I've lost my 50% damage reduction. And you can see it pops back up. But because we're using this Poison Dart Spine Dart, um, this generates 50 mana every time a Poison Dart hits an enemy. So we're getting that mana back like super quick, man. Super, super quick. So you, there's only a tiny window where you're vulnerable for like maybe half a second, if that. Okay. Uh, lovely. And then guys, so uh, yeah, stonies uh, for the armor buff, uh, shoulders, anything you like, but 
Pauldron of the Skeleton King from Bounty Mats is best in slot because it has basically a free self res, which is great. Then, guys, for helmet, of course, is Carnival with a diamond in the helm. A diamond gives you more cooldown reduction, so you could be a spirit walk a lot more often. That way, you can proc your shock army damage bonus much, much higher, man. It's good. And uh, Carnival, guys, makes the 10 factions close to you will shoot a powerful poison dart every time you do. Love it. Then, the guys, the common ornament Brater for damage reduction. Uh, anything from one to three stacks. We give you start giving you a damage reduction buff, okay? Which is absolutely fantastic. Always keep this up, guys. As maximum stacks as you possibly can, okay? Lovely, lovely. All right, then, guys. So, uh, we've done the main gear. Let's go do the cube. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There you go, guys. Canine's cube. Okay, guys. So, obviously, Echoing Fury. Echoing Fury gives you movement speed buff, and more importantly, a 75% attack speed buff when you slay five enemies. And as you slay another enemy, it will refresh it as well, okay? So try to aim for mobs, the weak ones first, yeah? Then when you hit that poison rotation, guys, Spirit Walk, hopefully jump into that poor power, or even the purple one, and boom, kill him. Just kill him, guys, kill him. <laughs> Lovely. Mask and Drone, guys, increase all your pet DPS, of course, all your pet starts will hit it harder. And there's, of course, Clementia Elements, so when you hit your poison rotation, guys, that's your window of D. P S. Lovely, lovely. Let's go over base skills and follower guys. So pause like spine dart guys for the mana gen. Make sure you cast darts for your pets and you and yourself. Prime's prime nader guys, increase damage and this is your grouping spells. You want to pull loads of mobs as you can. Cast nado, put them into one on the spot. Blast them guys, blast them man. Lovely. Big bad voodoo slam dance guys. Increase attack speed and damage buff. You can change this to jungle drums if you want to. For an extra thirty an extra ten seconds on top. But you will lose the 50% damage increasement. Okay, it's up to you. So, um, yeah, that's your options, basically. So, I was like, guys, the intelligence and armor buff. Always keep this stacked up as maximum as possible. Always use jaunt guys on spirit walk because it makes you immune to damage for three seconds. And the longer you're in spirit walk, the bigger damage bonus you're going to get from shoving around this triumph. Lovely. Horrified guys, frightening aspect for the massive armor buff. So this with stone gauntlets it's basically got up to like 25k armor roughly. It makes you super duper, super duper durable. Then for passive guys, pierce the veil, increases your damage by 20% across the whole screen, which is great. Fetch siphons guys, so they last 60 seconds. So as you're attacking, you'll generate fetch siphon. This is why it's very important to have capped attack speed to get these guys out as quick as possible, okay? Lovely. Then guys, competent ritual, uh, an extra 25% damage. That's multiplication damage bonus within 20 yards, okay? You want to be 20 yards within the enemy. So 20 yards is roughly from here, about, about, from, about from here to that chest. That's that's roughly 20 yards, okay? It's about 20 yards. And, um, yeah, make sure we win that circle, okay? Because, you know, you don't want to be slightly outside to lose all that massive damage bonus. Then, guys, absolutely key to be able to cause is grave injustice. So within 20 yards, which is extended by your pickup radius as well, which is good, uh, you get one second cooldown on all your skills, which is really, really nice, man. It also heals you as well. Brilliant. Love Grave Injustice. Such a such a great, great thing. All right, guys. Last thing, man. Of course, is uh, Paragon and follow-up. So uh, cap out your movement speed. Like I said, I've got 1,500 into VIT right now. So I'm up to 700k. Otherwise, I probably died too much. Now rest into main step. Lovely. All right, guys. Follow-up. I like to use the Enchantress. I like to use the Indestructible token, okay? And uh, the skills I'm using is Charm. Okay, so the charm's enemy up to fight for you for eight seconds. Amplification is the most important thing here. <coughs> Excuse me, because it uh, increases your damage by up to 10% elemental DPS, which is massive. These damage raises as the uh, the follower has more intelligence on the enchantress. So you can get up to about 25k, just make sure you roll in on all the gear, toe bases and legs and chest and all that good stuff, and it helps out massively. Then go max that out. Then, guys, use erosion, which increases your uh, effective enemies in order to take an extra 10% increased damage. So, use erosion for push. You can use power shield, but honestly, the build's tanky enough as it is. Use erosion for an extra 10%. Then, guys, use fate's lapse, which for the free self res. You can use focus one for attack speed if you're an absolute pro, but if you're just starting out, definitely use fate slaps, guys. So we got an extra self res, especially on hardcore, you know, because we don't have no self res in the, uh, in the actual build here. If you are playing hardcore, I would change confidence ritual to spirit vessel. Okay, lovely. All right, guys, so uh, followers gear then. So um, because this is a GR push build, we want to interrupt the Rift Guardian as much as possible. We don't want the Rift Guardian doing anything. So what you can do, you can use Thunder Fury, guys, which is a lightning-based weapon, and the proc streaks out lightning and debuffs the uh, attack speed and the movement speed on the enemies. So it keeps you alive as well, which is great. And then it procs the Wire Word Ring, okay? Lightning damage has up to a 35% chance to stun for 1.5 seconds. So when you've got loads of attack speed stuff on your follower, 
it's just stunning the rift guardian really really well and the rift guard can barely do anything to you which is great lovely if i forget guys this is my t16 swap out gear okay so uh, i've got sage boots on with canes and sages here then what do i swatch right swatch switch out a uh rogue so we get a three piece bonus on both so i can just switch out for t16 doesn't really matter about what you have here really nothing, nothing really best in the slot oculus ring guys is very important okay get one that's up to 85 percent and when you see that golden pool of power which is spawned by killing monsters from your follower jump to that golden pool because your dps is going to be much 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 higher brilliant really key to the build guys is actually gloves of worship now when we drink a potion from the altar which you forgot it fully unlocked um it says here shrine effects last for 10 minutes okay so uh, if i drink a potion now but boom we're now got empowered now for 10 minutes your resource ready generation has increased and your cooldowns are reduced how awesome is that it's well nice so these last 10 minutes so as you're drinking your potion you're getting these cool effects the most important one this the cooldown one is really good but the most important one is frenzy frenzy just increases your attack speed passively man for 10 minutes <laughs> okay so you really really don't want to die and that's why we was talking about fates laps over here so you really don't want to die because if you lose your frenzy your empowered the protection shielding all those things add up in a push okay so uh really really important so yeah always use gloves of worship to make those baseline buffs last 10 minutes okay brilliant then guys uh home pads for a teleport damage reduction especially with hardcore so if you're in a bad spot you can teleport out and have a protection bubble for 65 percent damage reduction for helmet i've got broken crank this is a part of my t16 swap out but uh best in slot would actually be blind faith helmet so that way your follower can even blind the rift guiding if it can't stun it awesome <laughs> then the guys use Tarasha just because it's got attack speed on it amulet guys is always flavor of time so it doubles their pylon effect so you get two minutes shield especially which is amazing for this build two minutes speed one minute conduit one minute power okay which is great so we'll always have that then uh nemesis brace guys you can summon more elites and packs from shrines will give you more progress and off you go, guys. Off you go, man. And there you go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe for more Diablo content. Uh, I will do Arakir and GR solo build next, which I did 150 with a little while ago. Off better build, which I do think is actually a better build. This one here, I'll do this video next. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Have fun in Sanctuary. See you for soon. Oh, yeah.